Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, today I want to do something kind of interesting because I saw a question posed on the internet from a recent lottery winner, which uh, Quebec man won $7 million in the lottery and he had a choice. Take $7 million as a lump sum or take $1,000 per day for life. Um, what are you going to choose? Now, before even thinking about this, I would choose the $7 million no matter what. However, when there was a vote done and 15,000 people at the time when I looked at it had voted, 59% of people chose $7 million up front and 41% of the people chose $1,000 per day for life. And this is actually a really interesting question because something like this happens to people all the time when they have a defined benefit pension plan at an employer and they either get laid off, change jobs, or retire. And at that point, they're given a choice. Do you want to take a lump sum that you can invest that should pay out X over your lifetime? Or do you want to keep your pension that's going to pay monthly and then stop paying when you die. So in the case of getting $1,000 a day for life, obviously you're going to lose if in the first year you pass away. Well, your family doesn't have that $7 million because you only got the $1,000 per day for life. So it's a little bit different of a calculation than the pension one. So I did something, I have a spreadsheet here that I made I made some assumptions. I'm going to try and explain it and hopefully Sean can put some of the numbers and stuff up on the screen. And you know, if you find this interesting or you want to keep informed with us, we'd love to have you. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers. So if you like, subscribe, comment, let us know what your choice would be after we go through it because it actually worked out a little bit different than I thought it was going to. So I thought the 7 million was going to last longer under my case scenario than it did. What did I do? Okay, well, this isn't how it's going to happen in real life because, you know, somebody's going to get $7 million. They're going to, you know, probably immediately buy a home, buy a car, you know, blow through two or three million. And somebody that gets $1,000 a day for life well, they're probably not going to wait three years to have a million dollars in the bank and then buy the house and then wait another year and buy the boat or the cabin. So they're going to probably be borrowing off of, you know, this income that they have where other people are going to be spending and having a smaller amount. So what I did is I said, OK, let's just assume the person with the three hundred sixty five thousand dollars a year for life. 366 every four years, but I didn't put it in the calculation. Uh, or the 7 million, they're spending all of it. They're just spending every penny they have. And this is not how I would invest it. This isn't how I would recommend investing this money. But for this case scenario, I said they're going to invest in a GIC that's making 3.5% per year for life and spending that income minus the remainder they need to top up to $365,000 a year for life. And so the first question we're going to ask is how many years does it take just for the break even point? Well, somewhere between year 19 and 20, the person making $365,000 a year is finally going to have that full 7 million paid out to them. Anything on top of that is higher. But how much longer does it last if, you know, so your first year, you got 7 million, you make 3.5% on that 7 million, but then you pay tax on that GIC income at 100%. So all of that GIC income is taxable. What I did is I assumed a 30% average tax rate, but once it gets really small, your tax rate's not going to be 30. It's going to be a little higher in the beginning. It's going to drop down. So the tax rate just rolling, depending on the province, isn't going to quite work out. 
All right. So in the first year, for example, the seven million after tax makes a hundred and sixty six thousand and change. So they are going to have to deplete the amount of money that they have in their seven million down by two hundred and three thousand eight hundred and sixteen. So then the next year, the GIC income is going to be lower and they're going to have to take more and more out of their seven million reserve fund. Well, they actually, in this case scenario, run out of money at year 26. They've spent it all, which is exceptional for a lottery winner. Usually they're bankrupt within like a couple years. So that's one thing to think about, too, is what are your money habits actually going to be? How are you going to invest this money? All of these other things, because... Most people that see that amount of money, they've never seen it before, they didn't really earn it, they're just going to blow through it and run out of money and be bankrupt and have a whole bunch of debt and loans and all of these other things. So it did not last near as long as I thought it would. In this case, it only lasts for 26 years. So, you know, an 18 year old that won this is going to run out of money at 44. Well, if they're assuming that their life expectancy is going to be, you know, somewhere up around the range of 50, 60, you know, 70, 80, 90, maybe the 365 a year for life makes sense. And a lot of times that's what it comes down to is like when you're choosing that pension option, it's like how long do you expect to live? Um, because if you don't think you're going to live for very long, then you want the chunk of money. But if you really need it to last, then you might want that income for life. So sort of the same as choosing CPP and OAS, because that's kind of where the rub is. Like, how long do you expect to live? Uh, because you're not going to get anything if, you know, you make the wrong decision. So anyway. I just thought it was kind of an interesting uh, scenario to run by you. So if you found it interesting, leave a like. I uh, hope you guys are doing well and we'll chat soon. Cheers.